If you've done any electrical work or studied electricity, you've probably run into these terms, DC and AC. There are basically two types of electric current, direct current and alternating current, and that's what DC and AC stand for. DC is direct current, and this is the type of electric current that you get from a battery. If you wanted to define this, you could say it's the continuous flow of charge in one direction. The continuous flow of charge in one direction. So when you hook up a battery with some wires, say you have a battery here and you put a, a wire and a little light bulb here and then run a wire back to the other end, you get current flowing through the wire and it just moves through the wire continuously in the same direction the whole time. That's direct current. If you were to graph this, let's make a graph of the voltage over time, it would just be a steady graph. It would be the same the whole time. Or if you were to graph the current over time, so here's time, and this is the current, and it turns out, we'll see this again later, the symbol for current is I. That's also just a steady flow of current. As time goes on, the value for I never changes. AC stands for alternating current, and it's different. Alternating current is the type of electricity that the power company provides to your house. And whereas direct current is the continuous flow of charge in one direction, in alternating current, the direction of the current flow re reverses repeatedly. The direction of the current flow alternates back and forth. And that's obviously why they call it alternating current. If you were to make a graph of alternating current, it would look something like this. The voltage over time goes up and down, up and down, up and down, like that. And the same thing with the current. If you were to graph the current over time, it would also oscillate back and forth up and down, up and down. And what this up and down means, the up corresponds to the, the current flowing one direction and the down part corresponds to the current flowing another direction. So literally, if you have a piece of wire here, the electrons in the wire are moving through the wire in one direction and then they all of a sudden stop and turn around and start heading back in the other direction and they do that over and over and over again. So they, they never really travel. They never really get anywhere. Electrons don't actually flow from the power company all the way to your house. All the electrons in the wire all the way in between the power company and your house are simply moving back and forth, moving back and forth, moving back and forth. But in the process, they transmit energy to your house and the, the electric devices in your house are able to, to use that energy. Mathematically, this back and forth motion follows a curve that we call a sine wave or a sine curve. And you'll study that mathematically in um, trigonometry probably later on. Now, when you see this, you might ask, why? This seems so much simpler, just to have a steady voltage and a steady current. Why do they have the, the voltage go forward or the voltage go positive negative positive negative and the current going backward forward backward forward like that well it turns out that alternating current is much easier and cheaper to produce and it's much much cheaper to transmit over long distances if the electric company provided direct current directly to your house it would cost thousands or millions times what it costs to deliver the alternating current. It is much, much more efficient to produce and transmit alternating current, and that's exactly why they do it. And then uh, two numbers that are just good to know that are associated, associated with this. In the United States, the power companies produce electricity at 120 volts 
So the voltage in your standard electrical outlet is 120 volts and it's alternating at what we call 60 hertz and this HZ is an abbreviation for the unit hertz that's H-E-R-T-Z not hertz like ouch that hertz this is named after Heinrich Hertz a physicist and hertz just measures the frequency 60 hertz means it goes back and forth 60 times per second so the oscillation is really pretty fast the electrons move along the wire in one direction turn around and go back the other direction and they go through that complete cycle forward and back 60 times every second and if you're doing anything any kind of electrical design work say you're designing a, a new television set or something like that or a transformer or power supply for a computer or something you need to know that in the US it's going to be plugged in to an outlet that gives electricity at 120 volts and 60 Hertz so all the devices that we buy have to be built to that specification in Europe the electricity is different the voltage is different and the frequency is different and so devices that you have here if you travel overseas and take them to another country in particular a European country they won't work you can if you plug them in you can damage them and typically to prevent that from happening not only is the electricity different but the plugs are different if you take your um, hair dryer or electric razor something you might commonly travel with you take it over to England then you try to plug it in the plug is a different shape and if you actually force the plug in there it's getting different voltage and a different frequency than it was designed for and it, it may not work or, or more likely is going to be damaged but you can buy a little converter device that you plug into the wall a, a, an adapter and it will change the power from the voltage and frequency that they provide to what you need so those are commonly uh, bought for travel purposes but these numbers are good to know if you take just about any electrical device like your television or your toaster or something like that and look on the back or flip it over and look at the bottom you'll see a little label that tells you the voltage and the frequency that it's designed to be used with